If your child is learning their ABCs, making the alphabet out of Play-Doh or modeling clay is a great activity to help them learn. It's fun and easy. I'll show you how. <laughs> to make our Play-Doh alphabet, you need Play-Doh and some tools. You can buy Play-Doh tools at a toy store or you can use things lying around the house. You need a smooth surface to work on, a hard rolling tool like a can or a jar, a plastic knife to cut with, and then you can use whatever objects you find around your house that might make an interesting texture or shape in your Play-Doh. Let's start with blue and make a letter A. Using both of my hands to apply even pressure, I'm gonna roll the Play-Doh out into a rope. Once it gets as long as I'd like it, I'm gonna trim off the end, here and here. Fold this like that, trim off this, and there's our A. For B, let's try something a little different. We're gonna roll our dough out flat using the side of our jar. Flipping it over as you go, so that you get a nice and even pancake. Now I'm gonna use my can to cut out two circles. Put them in the middle like this. And then for the rest of my pancake, I'm gonna cut out a long line like this and set it along the sides of my circles. Now to make it look more like a B, I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center of each. Hey, bottle cap starts with B. And there we have our blue B. C is next. To make the C, I'm going to do another rope with purple. Rolling it out, nice and even. Trim off one end. And there's a C. But it's not that interesting, so I'm gonna use my knife to add little lines. C. Now to make the D, I'm gonna flip over my C and take some more of my rope I just made and put it on the end. To make it more interesting, I'm gonna add some dots with the back of my pencil. D for dots. D. For E, I'm gonna use purple again. And roll it out flat. Then I'm gonna use my knife to cut two equal strips. And I'll trim up the ends to make them neat. I put one here and cut the other into three parts. There's your E. Take away the bottom and you have your F. For G, let's use green. I'll make a nice long rope again. Curve it up. Put the end in, like that, and there's your G. For H, let's use our green to roll out a nice big pancake. And this time I wanna add some texture, so I'm gonna use one of my cans to roll ridges along it. Then using my knife, I'm gonna cut a rectangle. Then I'll cut out the top and the bottom, and there's our H. For I, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Now I'm gonna roll up each little piece and make them into a ball. start to form my letter I. 
and there's an eye. The cool thing about the little balls is you can easily rearrange them. To your next letter, J. Now K. So for K, I'm going to make a thicker rope than I've made before. Using my knife, I'll cut almost halfway down there and cut through the other side too. Flip it this way. Open up the legs and there's our K. For L, let's do another flat piece. So first I'll make my long rope. Then I'm gonna roll down with my jar, smoothing it out as I go. Trim off the end, cut a short piece, then a longer piece, L for longer. Put them both together, and there's our L. I'm gonna use a chopstick to add lines. Line starts with L. Okay, M, M, M. Let's start with a mound, like the letter M for mound, and roll it into almost like a triangle until it starts to look like a little bit of a mountain. Now we're gonna trim off the sides. Cut down the middle. And there's our M and all its beautiful mountains. Next up is N. Let's stretch out a piece of rope, nice and long. Just make an N very simply. Like that. To make our O, I'll use orange. And I'll roll it into the biggest pancake yet. I'll use my largest can to cut out a circle. Then I'll use my bottle cap to cut out the center. There's my O. For P, I'll cut a long strip from my leftover pancake and put it there. For Q, put a little strip in right there. There's our Q. For R, I'll cut the back of our circle off. We'll add a strip back in here and a little leg there. And there's our R. For S, I'm gonna use green again and do something a little bit special. I'm gonna roll out a rope but make it thin at one end and a little bit thicker at the other. And this will help you remember your S because it looks like a snake. For my T, I'm gonna use the green again, roll out another rope Turn the ends. And use my forks, tines, to put a little print in it. Or add texture, which also starts with T. All right, we're winding down. For you, let's take two long ropes and twist them together. Now I'm twisting them up. Turn them up like that, up like the U. And there's our U. Now our last letters are kind of similar. So we're going to do them in a special way. 
once again, we'll roll out a big pancake. This one happens to be pink. I'm gonna cut four equal length strips. First, let's make our V. There's our V. Then we add two more. There's our W. Now we take those two and flip them over. There's our X. And take one away. We have our Y. For our final letter, we use our strips again shape a Z. But let's make this Z something that kids can remember by giving it a little something extra. Let's give it stripes like a zebra. Z for zebra. And there we have it. That's our alphabet. Try making alphabet letters out of Play-Doh with your kids. Not only will they have fun, the hands-on activity will help them learn and remember their ABCs. Show me all the cool letters you make at home by hashtagging Mother Goose Club on social media. As always, we'd love to hear from you, so type in comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. Hey everyone, welcome to our series on reading at home with your kids. Today, we're gonna to be reading Rainbow, Rainbow. Spending a few minutes reading with your kids is a great way to get them reading ready, but it also shows them they can have a fun time while they do it. Today we're going to give you some tips and some tricks on how to make reading come to life for your kids. Let's go. With all of the distractions in life between technology and, and busy schedules, it's easy to forget how important it is to read with your children. Today's book is an adaptation of the popular Mother Goose Club song, Rainbow Rainbow. I know my girls love rainbows and we also love reading aloud. Okay guys, so here we are again. We're gonna read another book. Are you guys ready? Yeah! All right, good, good, good. So, what does this say? Ali, you wanna take a crack at that? Rainbow, Rainbow by Harry and Sana Joe. Excellent job, let's get right into it. All right, let's check it out. Let's see what's going on here. Hi, Bo Peep. What a beautiful day. And look, it's a rainbow. Bo Peep knows a song about rainbows. Let's sing it with her. Oh, look at this. What do you see? There are a lot of flowers in here. And rainbows, this is a really pretty place. I wonder what's on the other side of the hill. You don't want Treasure. Wonder? Treasure. Look, I tre see treasure. Uh, Lena, what do you think's on the other side of the hill? Uh, I obviously see treasure. It could be anything. People. What? People. People? People? Yeah, I guess so. I guess you keep going over the hills, you're gonna run into some other people. When reading with your kids, feel free to take it really slow. Just take your time. Look at the pictures, uh, let them point out things that interest them and keep them engaged. All right, so let's turn the page and see what's next. Rainbow, rainbow, high and bright. Rainbow, rainbow, made of light. Excellent. There are more flowers. This is a really pretty Yeah, scene. look at these ones. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's a song. Lennon, you take it, take it away. <laughs> 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 all right, so from the clouds down to the ground, I see colors all around. Okay, so we're talking about colors. Can you guys name any colors? Purple, blue, blue, green, yellow, Orange, red. Rainbow Rainbow was a great book for reading with your kids because it helps them learn their colors and they also learn to make the connection between the color and the word they see on the page. Over time, with practice, that'll become reading. Hey, do you guys know when rainbows happen? <gasps> I know, I know, I know. Raining and sunny. Oh, when it's raining and sunny? Yeah, when the sun is shining and it's raining, that's for sure. All right. Red. Orange, yellow, green, blue, 
indigo and violet too. Ah, so indigo is that color blue that we didn't know the name for, so we learned something that's really cool. There are so many benefits to reading books at home. Kids gain confidence from practice, and the more they practice and the more time you spend reading books together, the more likely they are to participate in school. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet too. Oh, you just made a song of anything. That's pretty good though. <laughs> if you have older kids and want to level up on reading time, try letting them take a turn to read to you or the family. It'll give them an opportunity to build some confidence, especially when it comes to reading in front of others. Let's turn the page. A rainbow. Who has a pot of goals at the end of the rainbow? The leprechaun. The leprechauns. Uh, so many beautiful colors. Goodbye, Bo Peep. Let me read that. So many beautiful colors. Making a song of anything. Goodbye, Bo Peep. Goodbye, Bo Peep. When you engage in at-home reading, let your kids pick out their own books. It doesn't matter if the book is easy for them to read. All reading is good. Okay, all right, so that's the end of that. So Rainbow Rainbow by Harry and Sana Joe. <laughs> a great way to take reading at home to the next level is to come up with a game or a craft that goes along with what you just read. It'll give you an opportunity to discuss some of the themes as well as give the kids an opportunity to get creative and have some hands-on learning. Construction paper in the colors of the rainbow, crayons or washable markers, scissors, glue stick. All right, I have a craft. Are you ready for the craft? Yeah! Today, we are going to use our hands to put these hands together in rainbow order. We're gonna take a sheet of paper. You pick what type of what color paper you want. I'll purple. help you reach it. Purple? We're gonna start with purple, okay. For our rainbow rainbow activity, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all these together and we're gonna end up with this. To begin with, we would take a piece of construction paper and a marker, and we would trace our hand. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our hands down in the center. I'm sure you guys have done this at school at some point. Get to tracing. Trace, trace, trace. Trace, trace, trace. Trace, trace, trace. trace. Yeah. I should mention also that when you trace, you're probably gonna get a little in your hand, so investing in washable markers might be a good idea. All right, wow. so everybody take a minute to uh, appreciate your uh, okay. your ink stains. Yeah, everybody, everybody uh, say, I got, I got yeah. a little green on mine. Sticky. Get the blue right there, a little stickiness. Once you trace that, then you're gonna cut it out and you'll end up with this. So now it's time for to snip, snip. <laughs> snip, snip. Just cut it, cut the parts off, the big parts off and then they'll be out of your way. So when you go in for the detail, okay. it won't be as big a deal. We're gonna take your glue. Uh, you can use any type of glue or adhesive that you feel is safe for you and your children. And we're going to put some right here. After you've done that several times over, you have the final product, a beautiful handmade hand Rainbow. Hey, let's give him a big smile on the camera. I'm almost yeah. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, cool. Well, you know. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Quality reading time instills a lifelong love of learning. And we hope this video encourages you to incorporate reading into your everyday life. If you have questions or suggestions, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks again for watching. Video, we're going to show you a really easy way to make Play-Doh at home. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolyn, and these are my friends Phoebe and Kira. When I was a kid, I spent hours making shapes and creatures and pretend foods out of Play-Doh. I loved the endless possibilities of a lump of fresh, squishy dough. <laughs> what I didn't realize was that those little mounds of dough were helping me develop my hand muscles and sparking my imagination. So now I love watching these guys have that same creative experience and knowing the great benefits they're getting while they play. In this video, we're gonna show you a really easy way to make Play-Doh at home. 
This is a great project to do with kids because not only will they learn by helping you with the cooking, but they also have fun playing with the finished product. The best place for this project is the kitchen because we'll need to cook our dough on the stove for several minutes. And plus, we might make a little mess. The tools that we'll need are a small saucepan, a wooden spoon, a plate, measuring cups, and measuring spoons. The ingredients that we'll need are flour, water, salt, vegetable oil, cream of tartar, and food coloring. And we'll also need some glitter because we're making our dough sparkly. Phoebe and Kira help me with the measuring, which is a great thing for them to learn. Okay, are you guys ready to add the ingredients? Yeah! Okay, first, one cup of flour. Phoebe? It's hard to come out. There you go. Good job. All right, second, we're gonna add one cup of water, and I'll do that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, third, a quarter cup of salt. All right, Kira, good job. Now, we'll add one tablespoon of vegetable oil, and I'll do that. It's very tiny. It is very tiny. One tablespoon, here we go. Then, we add two teaspoons of cream of tartar. Do you each want to add one teaspoon? Yeah. Okay. And with your finger, you want to level that off? Yeah, good job. Right into the pan. Good job. So Kira, do you see what Phoebe did? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then level it off. Good job. Nice, okay. Now it's time to add the food coloring. What color should we make our Play-Doh? Blue. Blue, sounds good. So let's add 10 drops of blue food coloring to the pan. I can add five and Kira can add five since five plus five is 10. Perfect, all right, let's count together. One, One two, three, four, Five. Good job. Okay. Now, Phoebe, your turn. One, two, three, four, five. Good job, guys. Now, with a wooden spoon, we stir everything together until it's mostly mixed up. Good job. Phoebe, do you want to try? Yeah. Okay. Good job, Kira. Nice. It sounds bubbly. It does sound bubbly, doesn't it? Now we keep stirring until most of the lumps are gone. It already smells like Play-Doh. It does smell like Play-Doh. Once the mixture looks smooth, we put the pan on the stove over medium heat and continue stirring the mixture while it's heating. To be safe, I do the cooking part, but I make sure to show Phoebe and Kira what's happening in the pan as the mixture starts to change because it's a neat process to watch. After a couple of minutes, you'll start to see solid clumps forming in the pan. Continue to stir these clumps together until they form one giant doughy mass. It happens pretty quickly. Hey guys, come look at this. See, it's starting to look like dough. Once your dough looks like this, turn off the heat and take your pan over to the counter and dump the dough onto a plate. Now the dough is very warm, so I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes until it's cool enough to handle. Now just knead the warm dough until it feels mixed up. Do you 
you guys want to try? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go for it. What does that feel like, Kira? It feels like sticky ice cream. Sticky ice cream. What do you think, Phoebe? I think it feels like melted ice cream. Like melted ice cream, yeah. Does it feel mixed up? Yeah. yeah. All right. And that's it. Let's add the glitter to make it sparkly. You got it. What color should we use? Pink. Pink? I like that idea. All right. So we just make a dent in the middle, like this. And then we add glitter. Like that. And then just knead it until it's spread throughout. See? Wasn't that easy? I love being able to make any color we want. Me too. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> what does it feel like? It feels like squishy dough. Squishy dough. I like to go like this. I'm yeah. glad we went with the blue. The blue is a pretty color. It is a pretty color. With pink sparkles. I like to poke it. Poke, 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 poke. I'm gonna stick it. Yeah. I'm gonna try and make a snail. If you store your dough in a plastic baggie or airtight container, it will keep for several months. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by showing us how you and your kids did this project. We love to hear from you. So hashtag pictures and videos with Mother Goose Club and type stories into the comment section below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to be the first to hear about new videos. Bye! Bye. And... Bye! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Cute. Kids. Other Mother Goose Club is kind of tongue twister. <laughs>
Yeah, but how will we make a rocking rainbow without orange? Good question. Next, you'll take paper towel and simply fold it into a strip. Then you'll take each one and simply arc them from each jar to the next. Just like you'll need six jars, you'll need six paper towels, and you'll simply turn the jars to make a circle that connects your walking rainbow. Now we're gonna take these paper towels and we're gonna put them like this. Is that the shape of a rainbow? Yep. So can you do that? Now I need you to put this one here. What do you think is gonna happen in this jar? I don't know. Oh, I think it's gonna turn green. Wait a second. It looks so pretty. Can you name the colors of rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Red. How do you think we're gonna make purple? Red and uh, blue. Red. Yeah, red and blue. Red and blue. If you mix red and blue, it makes purple. When we made our walking rainbow, we started with a conversation about what colors we would use to mix new colors. For example, using red and yellow made orange. Even young kids can make a hypothesis or guess about what's gonna happen next. You as the adult can sit back and ask questions. What did they think was gonna happen? Did their prediction come true? Green. What does blue and yellow make? Green. 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 It's yeah. green. green. It makes green. It makes green. It makes green. It makes green. We need one more color. If we have red, we'll have orange, yellow, green, blue. Purple. How's that gonna be purple? What do you think we should do? Can we figure Go this right out? in this. Or what if we made a circle? Yeah. Remember, we can own, our challenge is that we can only fill up three jars. What? So what do you think if we did this? Do you all see a rainbow yet? No, we don't see a rainbow yet. We don't see a rainbow yet, but we're gonna have to be patient and wait and see if we come back, if we see all the colors of rainbow. I hope there's a rainbow. Can you guys do that? It's yeah. working. You think it's working? Yeah. All right, let's go and we'll come back later and see what it looks like. Okay. After about 24 to 48 hours, come back and watch your rainbow come to life. All right, come on, let's see what we made. <gasps> what do you think? <gasps> so cool! Does it look like the colors are walking across the jars in the paper towel? Yeah. yeah! And what colors did we use earlier? Used red, yellow, and blue. And now what colors do we have? Red? And now we have red, Green! Green! Now we have purple! purple. And orange! Do you see how it's blending over the top? Mm -hmm. You yeah, have that all looks so cool. different colors, don't you? What do you think the water did? It, went, it the paper towel soaked up the water and it moved it from jar to jar. Yeah, it did. It moved the water into the jars, didn't it? Yeah. Yes. That's so, so neat. Cool. All we really have to do is use three jars. This activity is great for kids of all ages. If your kids are working on their fine motor skills or working with their hands, they're gonna love to fold the paper towels or help you put the drops of food coloring in. If they're younger and they're working on their colors and numbers, they're gonna love to say the colors with you or even help count the drops as they go in. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. What did our colors do? Our red and our blue and our yellow, what did they make? They walked. They walked over the paper towel, you're right. That's why we call it a walking rainbow. This activity is a great way to not only talk about science, but to do it. This experiment shows a capillary action, when the water and the dye go through the paper towel to show the colors. It's a great way to show your kids cause and effect in a hands-on way. Wow, look at that rainbow. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's I can't cool. believe it. Yeah. Good job, good job. That was so much fun. You guys high five together. Oh. Good job. Good job, McLean. Yeah, that's awesome. We did good. Mm -hmm. What's a walking rainbow dance, Ren? Like over, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. That's the ocean. Never mind. Walking rainbow. Walking rainbow. 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 Ready, set, rainbow. When you're done, let us know how it goes in the comments, and please share your tips with the Show Me How community. Thanks for watching.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, that didn't hurt. All right, I get a Band-Aid. I feel good now. Hey, I'm Jesse. I love playing pretend with my boys. Today we're playing doctor's office. Pretend play is a really important activity for your children. Not only does it boost your imaginations, but it also helps develop language, problem solving, and social skills. In this video, I'm gonna show you how pretend play can benefit your child. When kids play pretend and take on different roles, they experiment with vocabulary they don't use in their everyday lives. I'm gonna use my telescope. What does that do? <laughs> my heart laughed. You hear that? It said, <laughs> Good. Very. Awesome. All right, let's check your reflexes. You ready? Whoa! <laughs> you see that? That's right. Boing. Bang, bang. <laughs> Pretending to be different characters allows the child to see the world from a different perspective and learn how other people may feel. Ah, I think I hurt my finger, doctor. Nurse, get a band-aid. That was fast, nurse. Ah, so much better. Is it gonna hurt? Hey, that didn't hurt at all. You're an awesome doctor. You are the doctor of all doctors. Playing pretend also develops problem solving when conflict develops within the story they're playing or between the kids themselves. Did you hear that? Do you hear that, nurse? Gee, give me. Give me. It's okay. It's okay. Can you check my Yeah, can you check my mouth? Check my mouth. What's in my mouth? Um, a dragon. A dragon. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> the possibilities for pretend play are as endless as your child's imagination. Pretend play is so important for brain development. So pretend play with your kids and let us know what you come up with. Show us how you and your children play pretend by hashtagging photos and videos with Mother Goose Club or by tagging us here on YouTube. And be sure to check out the other great videos for kids available on our YouTube channel. Your, your head feels a little warm. Uh-oh. 100 degrees. 100 degrees? I think you need to take a little rest. I think it's a good I'll idea. I'll give you some soup. Soup sounds really good. Yeah. Doctor, thank you so much for your help. I feel so much better. Your soup's ready. My soup's ready. Ugh, I gotta go get my soup. Hey, I'm Jesse. Today, that threw me off just saying, hey, Jesse. Hey. <coughs> let me prepare, let me prepare. Hey, I'm Jesse. Today, gosh, that's probably why people call me Dusty, because the way I talk. It's so cold. What's in there? You're cold? All right, nurse. The nurse is cold. When kids play pretend and take on different roles, they, they vocabulary. Vocabulary. It's kind of warm in the doctor's office. It's, it's kind of, now it feels better. No, I don't. The. <laughs> Diamond! 10 hundred. <laughs> What's the first line again? So for, first, the possibilities, sorry. The possibilities. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> everyone, today we're going to show you how to make 2D and 3D shapes out of marshmallows and toothpicks. We'll also explain how this activity is great for your kids' hands and minds. What do we have? Wow, you are so fast! Look at all those 3D shapes you made! Let's go! Let's learn about shapes! Okay, we are going to talk about two-dimensional shapes. What's your favorite shape that you see? Mm, that one. What's that called? Square. What about you? What's your favorite shape? Do you know what this is called? Pentagon. Great. We're going to make 2D shapes, so that means we're going to take these yummy, what is it? Marshmallows. Marshmallows, and we're going to take these toothpicks, and we're going to build some shapes. Toothpicks, mini marshmallows, shapes worksheet. 
First we'll start by making 2D shapes. Take your toothpick and your marshmallow and just simply create a shape. Let your kids have fun with it and play with whatever shape they want. Good job. All right, which one are you gonna make first, Mallory? That one. What's that called? A triangle. Very good. You can challenge your kids to copy a sheet that you made with different shapes or simply have them copy the shape that you made. Then they'll need to use precision to get in the exact right spot. It's not something that as adults we think about often, but it actually takes a lot of planning for a child to do this. How do we need to finish it? A stick. We would need a third side, and we would need to stick it in the marshmallow. Very good. What do we have? A triangle. Mallory's working fast over here. Can you hold it up and tell me what it is? <gasps> Pentagon. Building two-dimensional or 2D shapes is a great way of helping your kids work on their fine motor skills. Fine motor skills is just a fancy way of saying using hands and fingers well. Can you pick a colorful marker? And we're gonna fill these in. Tell me how many sides there are. Three sides, good. Four sides. What's next? And five sides, wow. Good job, Mallory. You did great. Once your kids get the hang of the two-dimensional shapes, simply add on to it to make three dimensions. And just like that, we're in the next dimension. Are you ready to build some 3D shapes? Yeah. We're gonna need more toothpicks for this. So Toothpick. now, instead of 2D, we're gonna make 3D. So I need you to make a cube out of the square. A cube. A cube, yeah. So can you take the toothpicks and put them straight up and down? We're gonna make a cube. That'll be 3D. How many more sides do you need? Two more sides, one here. Good job. Okay, and then we are gonna finish that square. Now this is 2D, but if we put it on top, what is that? A cube. Very good. Building three-dimensional or 3D shapes is a great way to up the ante. Let your kids get creative about how they add together the 2D shapes they made. Once your kids have the hang of the two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes, challenge them to build structures. Okay, now that we have this cube, we're gonna build on top of it. We're gonna build, what, what should we build? A house? That's a good idea. All right, Mallory, so if we're gonna make a house, I'm gonna give you some supplies, so it's gonna be a challenge. Instead of just taking this and putting it on top, we're gonna to make it out of four toothpicks and one marshmallow. Are you up for the challenge? Yep. Okay. You're fast. And now what do you have? House. What? Mm -hmm. What do you have? A house? If you had that house, where would you want it to be? Where would you want to live? Beach. Oh, the beach, yes, I would agree. Finally, you can ask them what they're planning to do next. All of these questions will fire up their brains and grow their thinking skills. How high do you think we can get it? Oh no, my dad is high. You think we can get it so high, Mallory? How high can we get it? All the way to the sky. You think so? Why don't we ask and see if brother and sister can help us? Do you all want to call brother and sister and see if they want to come help us build? Yeah. All right, let's call them. One, two, three. Bye, Reese bye. And Reese and McClain. Reese and McClain, come help us. Hi. All right, y'all come over here. They're well, building. We're building shapes, and we want to see them. Over here. Good idea. How about we put toothpicks on the side so like it won't fall over? As a mom, one of the most fun parts is getting to see your kids work together as a team and collaborate together with their ideas. I think we should put a triangle all around it so it doesn't tilt and fall. See how fast you can build it so tall. Go, 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 go. They're going really faster. Okay, I'm gonna try to make it a little bit bigger on the uh -oh. bottom so it won't fall. We need to make the because it's so big, big, big. Uh -oh. Just keep using as many marshmallows as you can, Ren. Come help me. We only have two minutes left. We have to hurry. Mm -hmm. Who's gonna? Hurry. We have to make it taller than their castle. I'm so excited. You're so excited. Yes. Three, three. Three. Are we gonna? Are we gonna build it so so high? Yeah. Well, show me how. Can you put the triangle on top? Maybe that's the the turret of your castle. Come on, Minnie. Make fast. sure it stands no. up. Stronger on the oh, ten. No. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands in the air, hands in the air. 
Another fun idea is getting into teams and setting a timer. When we did that, they had a lot of fun competing and making a tower as high as they could. You guys did a great <laughs> job. All right, we did it. You guys we made a tall it. castle. Good job. Good job. And we can just hold again. Give up a high five. Say thanks, teammate. Thanks, teammate. Good job. Shake Mallory's hand. Say good, good job, job, Mallory. Look at their look at their castle. This <laughs> you would know how to shake hands, silly. Today we took marshmallows and toothpicks and made two and three dimensional shapes out of them. I think the most fun for my kids was just playing with toothpicks and marshmallows and things that they don't get to play with every day. We hope you and your family had fun with this activity and let us know how it goes in the comments below. Show us any tips or tricks and share them with the Show Me How community. Thanks for watching.
Today I'm going to show you how to teach your child all about the early math concept of measuring. The activity of measuring things is endless for kids. They love taking either a tape measure or using markers or anything else their heart desires. This is a super simple activity and you probably already have this stuff laying all around your house. So if you're ready, let's get measuring. Today's activities were super simple. We simply took things that the kids wanted to use to measure themselves with. All right, kiddos, Whoa. come on in here. Please I am gonna tell you guys what we're doing today. Silas, come over here by mama. All right, we are going to measure. We're going to measure some things. We're even gonna measure you, okay? We want to know how tall you are, how big you are. Yes, we're going to use some tape. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. For today's activities, I let my kids lay down on the floor, took some tape, we put a piece of tape at their toes all the way to their head, and then we used non-standard units of measure. And all that is are things that they wanted to measure themselves with. You can put whatever trains you want. Good. Stacking them up. There you go and then we lined up those objects right beside them to see how many items they were tall. They can use things like markers or their puppies or whatever else their heart desires and let their imagination go. Okay, Silas, so you see your bin of trains there? What if we take your trains and we line them up and see how many trains tall you are? Now keep lining them up all the way till you get to the other green tape. You're almost there. How many trains tall are you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fourteen. <gasps> fourteen trains tall. Good job. I'm gonna write the word trains here. We also used a chart so that my kids could write down their measurements. This is a great way for them to compare items and really get to see how big or how small something was in comparison with one another. What if we lined you up with markers to see how many markers tall you are? Wait. Uh, yeah? We can put them together. We can line them up and put them together. You're right. Yeah, that's time for me to build. How many more do you think? Do you think you can stack it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight markers. So is that more markers or less markers than the less trains? Markers. You're right. Asking your child a question like, do you think it's going to take more markers or less markers than it did trains to measure you is a great way to get their minds thinking about the comparison of measurement. Silas, we did trains to see how tall you were and markers. What else do you have that we could measure with? Puppies! <gasps> puppies! Let's measure your puppies. How many puppies tall do you think you are? Let's line them up. Let's see how tall you are with your puppies. One, two. Okay. But wait, now bigger. Oh, they're getting bigger. Oh, Just like you. Four. four. Now five. Oh. Now hang on, hang on. almost, Make almost sure there. Now six. You are six, six puppies tall. Good job, Silas. Using your wingspan, your arms, like it was if you were a bird flapping your wings. Can and you? An owl. That's right, and an owl. <laughs> Can you show me how wide your bed is? Using your wingspan, how yeah. how many wingspans of you do you need? Whoa! Wait, no. Let's go. There you go. There's one, and I'll mark it here. Measuring is everywhere. You can measure how tall something is. You can talk about the depth, the width. We even used puppies, which is something that Silas really loves. So he got to put his puppies line up and see how many puppies tall he was. Okay guys, so, so far we've measured with puppies, with trains, and, and, and markers. Now we have exact measurements right here. All right Silas, I need a foot. A really fun activity we did was measuring our feet. It was a lot of fun because it tickles when you trace around their foot. And then they took a ruler and got to measure how long their foot was. First that one, but put it this way for mama. Yeah, like that. Okay, and then we go. All right, there you go. All right, so we are gonna see. Oh, my God. Ah, that tickle is a tickle. Oh, Silas is a ticklish. All right, we're gonna measure your foot. Now, this is 12 inches long. Let's see how long your foot is using the ruler. What comes after five? Six. Rachel, what are you holding in your hand? Uh, yardstick. So sister, your yardstick didn't reach all the way to your head, did it? So we need a little more, so let me mark it. All right, now, put 
put the beginning there where my finger is. Now, do you remember how many inches a yard is? 36. Good, 36. Let's add 17 to 36. Okay, 36, 37, 38, 39, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. 53? Rachel, good job! For today's activities, we used standard units of measurement. And what that is, are equal measurements that we all can agree are the same. And that's simply a ruler, or a tape measure, or a yardstick. Then they got to see exactly how many inches tall they were. Measuring things is such a fun activity for kids. They can use things like tape measures or their puppies or whatever else their heart desires. If they wanna measure how wide their bed is, tell them about wingspan and let them put out their arms just like we did to measure how wide Silas's bed was. Kids love to measure things. This is a super simple activity and very inexpensive. You simply gather items around your house, maybe ask your children to gather some of their favorite items and get to measuring. Mother Goose Club Playhouse!